Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, today we, I will discuss with you the answers to the tutorial number one. There are four questions. So we'll start with the first question. In this question, uh, the first question talk about determine the largest weight W here, which can be supported by the wires shown in figure one below. Okay. So I did go wire, two wires, AB and AC. AB forms a 30 degrees angle with the horizon and AC forms a 45 degrees angle with the horizon. The stresses in wires AB and AC are not to exceed 100 megapascal and 150 megapascal respectively. So AB cannot exceed 100 megapascal and AC cannot exceed 150 megapascal. The cross-sectional areas are 400 millimeters square for wire AB. So AB 400 millimeters square and 200 millimeters square for wire AC. Wire AC is smaller and at 200 millimeters square. So how do we approach this? So I first label my directions Y and X, Y vertical, X horizontal so that whenever I write the equation for force equilibrium and moment equilibrium, I know my uh, directions of positive force. And so, and we'll just get what are the data given in the questions, in the questions. So, given that the area of AB equals to 400 millimeter square, so I wrote here, AAB, area of AB equals to 400 millimeter square, and I wrote here, area AC equals to 200 millimeter square. So, I know that sigma AB cannot exceed 100 megapascal, it's given here. And I know that AC cannot exceed 150 megapascal. So, I can now combine these two. Uh, I know that stress equals to F, force divided by area. And that must be less than 100 megapascal. And for AC, force AC divided by area AC. And that should be less than 150 megapascal. So, is there anything else that we can uh, obtain from here? I think we've done, we've done. So we've captured all the data from the questions in this form that we know we can use it in trying to find the solution to the question. So after that, I draw the free body diagram. So I took the point A. This is point A, and then I know this is direction of force AC which forms 45 degrees and then direction of AB are 30 degrees okay and then W is the weight downwards so I can now write the uh, equilibrium of force so summation of force in the y direction equals to zero so FAC this one sine 45 degrees upwards of course plus FAB sine 30 degrees, so this one is also upwards, this one, okay, minus W, W kat bawah ni, downwards, equals to zero. That is my first equation. The second equation is I took the summation of force in the X direction. So FAC cos 45 degrees, positive to the right, minus to the left lah, ni kalau ke kiri left, so this is minus FAB cos 30 degrees equals to zero. That is my second equation. By now you have some idea how to solve this. Yeah. So uh, let's move on. So so I've wrote I've written here my uh, force equilibrium in the x direction. So FAC cos 45 degrees positive minus FAB cos 30 degrees zero, and therefore I got here. FAC equals to FAB, saya pindahkan ke sini, divided by cos 45 degrees, tu jadi ke bawah lah. So, then I get for FAC equals to 1.225 FAB. This is equation number 3. So, now I can know that this equation number 3, I can put back into equation 1. So, I said FAB sine 30 degrees plus FAC sine 45 degrees, but I now substitute FAC equals to 1.225 FAB from equation 3 equals to W. So I can sine 30 degrees is 0.5. 1225 times sine 45 degrees is 0.866. Which 
campur dua ni, we get 1.366 FAB. So, I get the relationship FAB equals to 0.732W. Uh, from equation 3, I also know that uh, FAC equals to 1.25 FAB. So, I can now substitute FAB equals to 0.732W and therefore akhirnya, saya dapat FAC equals to 0.897W. What else do I need to know? So, I can now use the uh, uh, the relationship between stress AB given. So, that is the inequality sigma AB must be less or equal to 100 megapascal by, by definition sigma AB equals to force AB divided by area of AB and area AB is given by 400 millimeter square uh, sigma AB is given by 100 newton per millimeter square and point FAB equals to 0.732W here and therefore I get W must be less than 54.64 kN similarly here uh, I got another uh, set of uh, inequality that I need to obey, which that the stress in wire AC must be less or equal to 150 megapascal. So FAC, and this is equal to FAC divided by AC. FAC, I know that FAC is 0.897 W here, and the area of AC is 200 millimeter square, and this is less than. 150 megapascal, and therefore from here I get my W is less or equal to 33.51 kN. So in this case I have to take the smaller one because it's also obey the bigger uh, requirement, the, the bigger inequality. So W less than 33.51 kN. So that is the maximum W that can put here uh, that will obey both equation, both conditions, sigma AB and sigma AC. Okay, so this is the first question and you know how uh, you use the equation of motion and just the insertion of the uh, strength criteria allows you to find the uh, W value that can fulfill the maximum uh, strength of each uh, wire. All right. Let's move on to the second one. Um, so we'll take the smaller one, Tadi. So now, it's a second question. So in this second question, a truss is made from steel members with cross-sectional of each member of 1,200 millimeter square. And this is shown in figure below. Determine the stresses in members DC DC, mana DC? This is DC. Sorry, DF. Uh, uh, DF. This is DF. CE. CE. Okay. And BD. BD is here. Indicate tension T or compression C. So, so when you have problem like trusses, of course, it started with you finding the reaction force for the support. Okay. So, that, that is obtained by using the free body diagram. So, I draw a free body diagram and I label the reaction force. So, I've got reaction force at A, which is FYA, and reaction force at F, FYF. I didn't put a reaction force in X because there was no external force in the X direction. So, from there, uh, this is the free body diagram and try to find the summation of moment of at point F, which is here, equals to 0. So, F A Y times 10, 10 minus, well, how do we get 10? 4, 3, 3. So, the distance here, 4 plus 3 plus 3. Minus 100, this is 100. 3 plus 3 is 6. Minus 200 ke bawah. So, it's minus 200 times 3 equals to 0. This is your first equation. And because one unknown, one equation, we can solve it directly. And therefore, we get F A Y equals to 200 Pindah kanan, pindah kanan, 200 plus 3 plus 100 times 6 divided by 10 and we get 120 kilonewton. Quite straightforward. And then, last, and then we get use the uh, force equilibrium. So summation of Fy equals to 0. Then I can write Fy ke atas minus 100 ke bawah, minus 200 ke bawah plus Fy ke atas upwards. 
equals to zero and from there I get the reaction force for FeY and FFY 180 kilonewton. So this is just to solve the reaction force at both ends. Now, um, I look at trust DFE because I am interested to find the stress at component DF. So here is like I look at this point F and I label all the forces in the direction of DF, in the direction of DE, and then there is an external force 180 kilonewton. So I need to know my theta here because in order for me to resolve the force, I need to know the theta. So theta is, the angle theta is, the height is 4, the base is 3. So theta equals to inverse tangent 4 over 3. Yeah, and that gives us 53.13 degrees. And I know my area is 1200 millimeters square. So and when I use my, when I apply my force uh, equilibrium here, summation of force in the y direction equals to 0. So FDF sine 53.13, which is the vertical component, plus 180 equals to 0. And then I get my FDF equals to minus 2 to 5 kilonewton. So when it's negative, it shows that my assumption that it is going outward is not correct. So it is a compression. So I can I can correct this if you want, but I can use it back. So if I were to correct this, then I will, I will draw that will be the direction of FDF. So that's my new direction of DF. So it's a compression. So uh, sigma DF equals to FDF over A. Don't worry about the sign here. 2 to 5 kilonewton uh, divided by 1200 mm square. So it is 187.5 uh, megapascal. It is in compression. So I stated that this is in compression. And we can continue with the next section where we have to find the stress in the BD direction. So I cut my section here and you can see I now label my forces BD and then CD and CE. Okay. So Again, I'm interested in BD, so I need to find the angle here. So my angle here, theta CBD, so here, is inverse of 3 over 2. Height is 3, base 2. So we got theta CBD is 56.3. And when I use the equation of summation of force by the theta C, at about C, so it's 120 times 4, this is 120 times 4, this arm plus BD sine 56.3, this is the horizontal component, times the arm, this is 6. Okay, maybe I should label this as 4, maybe I should add here. This is 4. And this is 2. So 4 plus 2. So this 4 plus 2 is 6. You can see the 6 here. Okay, therefore we get, get the FBD, uh, equals to the one move to the right minus 480. Uh, we forgot the FBD. So and then uh, we divide by six times sine 56.3. So 96.2 kilonewton. It is in compression, not as tension as we see it because of the negative. So then I said uh, sigma BD equals to area. Uh, the force FBD divided by the area BD, and we know the area is 1200, and we have calculated FBD to be 96.2 kilonewton. So at the end, we have the stress in BD is 80.13 megapascal in compression. Uh, you can proceed with your own calculation at C. I think it's very straightforward, and the answer yeah, is also given there. So I will not uh, proceed with C, but I trust you can do it on your own okay now uh, we move to the next one so this is uh, number three number three is shown here the question goes like this part of the landing gear of a light plane is shown below determine the compressive stress in the strut AB in the strut AB caused by a landing reaction R equals to 20 kilometers so when the 
aircraft land, like plane land, you have uh, a reaction force of 20 kN. And we've got the strike inclined at 53.1 degree with BC. Uh, so they are the 53.1 degree here. Neglect weight of members. So they are light enough to be neglected. So jarak sini, jarak R to C is 200 plus 450. So here I draw the free body diagram of the uh, beam here. And I label the reaction force 20 kN from the tire and it's transferred to the strut, 20 kN. And this is force from the strut, FAB. I also label the angle here, 53.1. And then we've got the reaction force FCY and FCX. Now, the area of the pipe is given here, though. It's a hollow strut with outside diameter of 40 mm and inside diameter of 30 mm. So I find the area of strut is pi over 4, outside diameter square minus inner diameter square. That means 40 square minus 30 square. And I get the area to be 550 millimeter square. So the shaded area is 550 millimeter square. And all the force will go through this strut. So I calculate the summation of force uh, from moment at point C. Here is the point C. We want to calculate moment about point C. So we've got 20 kN kali jarak here. So 200 plus 450, 650 millimeter. And FB, FAB sign are 53.1. So we want to find the vertical component and then times the arm. The arm is 450 mm equals to zero. So when you use this equation, you can get because one equation one unknown directly solvable. So F2 equals to minus 20 times 650 divided by 450 sine 53.1 degree. So we've got the F, the force acting on the strut is 36.125 kN. This is in compression. So we move on to find the stress AB equals to force divided by area. So 36.25 times 10 to 2 by 3, this is kilonewton, divided by the area, 550, this is the area, and kita dapat 65.7 megapascal. This is in compression. So that's how you solve this problem. Right. So, and finally, we come to the question, the last question, question number four. Let me correct this. So a four, uh, a a one thousand kilogram, a one thousand kilogram homogeneous bar, is suspended from two cables, AC and BD. Kita ada cable that support this one thousand a ton of bar. Okay, and it this wire has cross sectional area of four hundred millimeter square. Determine the magnitude P and the location X. So kita ada satu daya luar, an external force P at the location of X measured from CA. Uh, of the largest additional force which can be applied to the bar. And then say the stresses in cables AC and cable BD are limited to, this one is 100 megapascal, the other one is 50 megapascal respectively. So what do we do? We also, we always started with the data that we get from the question. So what are the data that we get from the question? There are areas, 400 millimeter square, for example. There is this weight of this 1000 kilogram and then we got the stresses, the limiting, limiting stresses of AC and BD. So here I use the sigma AC as the limiting stresses in cable AC. So it equals to uh, FAC divided by AAC. And that's less than 100 Newton per millimeter square. Similarly, we say that for sigma BD, this rope here, this wire here, equals to FBD divided by area. ABD and area is 400 millimeter square and FBD is... Uh, all this must be less than 50 newton per millimeter square. So these two in equation inequality are uh, used that to simplify. So I said FAC 100 kali 400. So we get FAC must be less or equal to 40 kN. That's the limiting force that can act on FAC. And similarly, by using the criteria for FBD less than 5 newton per millimeter square times the area. So we got FBD must be less than 20 kN. So this is a, an equation for FBD and FAC. Okay. So what do we do next? What we haven't tried is our friend free body diagram. So here I draw the free body diagram and I label my 
force from the cable or wire this is FAC and this is wire in the FBD X Y direction and there's an external force acting 4 kilogram at, at a measurement of X from A and then got 1000 kilogram which is equal to 9800 Newton okay uh, one meter left and one meter right at the center of, of the beam. So once you are ready, you've got the free body diagram and you label the force here and here, and then you write the equation, the force equilibrium, submission of Fy equal to zero, FAC plus FBD minus 9,800 9, Newton ke bawah minus P, P acting ke bawah equals to zero. But we know that FAC is less than 40 kN, then FBD must be less than 20 kN. So, kita boleh tambah dua ni. FAC plus FAD. This one 40 plus this. So, it is less than 60 uh, kN. And therefore, we can replace that. FAC plus FBD equals to 9800 plus P. Here, equals to from this equation. And we get P less than 60 kN. Uh, so, uh, P less than 60 minus 9800 and we get p max is 50.2 uh, kilonewton so that's the first equation you can already get p um, so the next one is the last one using the moment of equation about a so i cari moment pada titik ini so p times x i'm using positive clockwise here P times X minus 9800 uh, times 1. This is ke bawah. Okay. So it's positive. Let me correct that. So uh, PX. Px plus 9 times 1. So, minus FBD. FBD ke atas. So, dia counterclockwise. So, dia negative. Kali 2, jarak ni 1 meter plus 1 meter. This. So, FBD is 2 meters away from A. And therefore, we can calculate FBD equals to Px plus uh, 900 divided by 2. And this is, must be less than uh, 20 kN. So, from here, we can do the calculation x is less than 20 times 2 pergi kiri uh, um, minus yeah this is minus so x must be less or equal Minus 800, so 240, uh, so 40 kilonewton kali 2, 20 kilonewton kali 2, 40 kilonewton minus 9800, and 50.2 kita dapat from before, it's calculated before, kilonewton, and it's about 30 something, 30.02, 30 I think, 32, I think, yeah, so divided by these two, we get x equals to less than, 0 0.602 so we want to find the max value is x max equals to 0 0.602 meter so here is a case where you have applied all the equations so you can see from the recurring process you draw the free body diagram write the force equilibrium write the for the moment equilibrium and then use the uh, material data or the stress limiting data and you can solve all the uh, parameters relating to the problem so I think uh, uh, please uh, do the revision, do the tutorial uh, on your own. Uh, this uh, you will benefit from doing a lot more exercise, but this should give you enough uh, motivation for you to continue. Try to do without referring too much to the question and try to do as much as on your own. That will allow your brain to develop a pattern and to think unassisted by the uh, solutions given. All right. Thank you very much. I hope it benefited you and we'll see you in the next class. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.